So once we have this general um, matrix equation for the uh, rate of our um, population, the rate of change of our population, um, we can find in the case where, where x is a, a vector of size 2, so in the case of two individuals, we can see from this that we're going to have two um, uh, two, uh, sorry, three, uh, three stable situations. So uh, the first two are going to come from, from this, which is um, that everyone is the first type, then everyone is the second type, and then here we've got Phi is, remember, it's essentially the average fitness. So when the uh, vector of fitness is equal to the average fitness, that's when everyone has the same fitness. So a mixed population where um, no difference between fitness. So, you know, that, that that's the idea that we have uh, individuals in our population that are of the first type, but we have enough individuals of that uh, type to uh, make up the numbers um, so that their utility of the, they get is the same as the utility of the other type, okay? Um, but this is just stability. These three things just give us that the derivative is zero. And if, if we think of a, a curve um, and the derivative being zero, can, can look like that, but it can also look like that. Now, the big difference between these uh, two things is that if I were to pop a marble on here, or a marble in that little dip there, that, that marble is stable. So it's on a completely flat surface. Um, it has nothing pulling it one side or the other. But if I give this the slightest of nudges, the marble will, will fall off. So whilst it's stable, it's not stable subject to a small change. And here we have the opposite. If I was to give it a small, small nudge, it would roll up, but then roll back down. And so this would be stable subject to a small, small change. Of course, a big enough change and it's not stable. Um, and that's what we're going to kind of call evolutionary stability. So this is stability subject to evolutionary change. Um, so what we need to define is what's called a mutated population. And this mutated population is just given a particular vector x um, and given some epsilon right? So some change. And if we have another strategy y, another population y, uh, we call the post-entry population x epsilon to simply be, all right, so it's going to be a vector still with, <coughs> with two terms, but the idea is we have x1 and we have x2, but we have a slight change. Um, so we introduce epsilon of our population, uh, epsilon of y into our population. So we have plus epsilon times y1, but we need to take that much x1 away, plus epsilon y2 minus that much x2 taken away. And so this is that idea of a slight nudge. So going back to these pictures up here, this is just nudging the marble a little bit, okay? And then from that, we can define what is called, um, let me uh, try and get them both in there. We can define what is called an evolutionary stable strategy, an ESS. And here we say um, X is ESS, is evolutionary uh, stable, if and only if there exists some epsilon bar greater than zero. So there is some nudge, and this goes back to that idea of the the marble like here, that I can move it a small enough amount such that it comes back. Of course, if I move it a lot, it'll, it'll not come back. But if I move it a small enough amount, it'll come back. So this is the small enough amount um, such that the utility of x, x epsilon 
So the utility of x in the population x epsilon is bigger than the utility of y in the population x epsilon for all epsilon less than epsilon bar and for all y. Okay. So this is this is this notion of what is the utility of a, of a strategy and um, that's just given by u of x y is simply equal to x a y transpose. So it's just the utility of x in a population where everyone's playing y. Okay. So that is evolutionary uh, stable strategies. And what we'll take a look at is um, how we can kind of compute this. So if we uh, go back to, um, let me go up, up here. If we go back to what our matrix A was, which was A, B, C, D. And that inequality, which, uh, let me just write it down again. So utility of X, X epsilon is greater than the utility of Y, X epsilon. That utility, that inequality will then just correspond to, uh, so, so for, for the first type to be stable, so when X is equal to one, zero, for that to be stable, um, what we have is that this inequality then becomes utility of x in x epsilon. So that is that um, we get a one minus epsilon at the time. So we're looking at this row here and we get a not one of the time, but one minus epsilon, right? Because x epsilon is gonna be one minus epsilon epsilon. Um, given that the only other population, uh, given that the other strategy y would be playing the second utility, plus b epsilon has got to be strictly greater than c times one minus epsilon plus d epsilon. Now, if epsilon is small, we know that this corresponds to a greater. C. If epsilon is small, this disappears, this disappears. The main factors we have here is uh, that. But if, if A is equal to C, then we do need, so this kind of, this and this then cancel out. We do then need that B has got to be greater than D. And so then we can say the first strategy is ESS. And another way of thinking about ESS is that it's resistant to invasion. So what would happen if I have a population of the first strategy and I throw in um, some of the second strategy? Well, that's if A is greater than C or A is equal to C and B is greater than D. And this notion is gonna, gonna lead us to a general theorem for finding ESS, not just of the first strategy, but kind of of any thing.